Meanwhile, the Democratic Alliance was the first party that raised questions about the ship that docked at Simonstown. For more on this, we now speak to DA Shadow Minister for Defence and Military Veterans, Kobus Mare, who now joins us via Zoom. Kobus, good morning and thank you so much for making time for us. What do you make of the revelations coming from the US Ambassador and also looking at the response from the Presidency that a judicial inquiry will be set up and it will be headed by a retired judge? Uh, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, I think to a large extent this has vindicated our position that, and our view that we have uh, held since de December last year. It was quite evident, um, you know, what we knew and what we determined at that stage is that, uh, uh, you know, ammunition was offloaded. There's no doubt about that. I've traced it back to, to import permits that was issued in 2019 and 2020 for Russian uh, as they define it, shells and and uh, and and uh, ammunition. Um, obviously, we we know that in especially during the last night, the Thursday evening, the night uh, there was activity on on the docks, and it was perceived and be seen as something that was loaded onto the vessel. Um, we couldn't determine what that was. I had a, a personal discussion with the minister telephonically. She undertook at that stage that once she has studied the documentation and has, has determined the validity and the legitimacy of that, she will make a statement and brief us on that. That never happened. So clearly uh, the fact that the, that the ambassador came out and publicly uh, alleging that the weapons was loaded onto the vessel that is quite dramatic and is very, very severe. Um, what was loaded, especially on the, or specifically on the, on the vessel, that is very, very questionable. We know that our ammunition and and um, prime mission equipment that is manufactured in South Africa is usually according to the NATO standards and not uh, the European or the Russian and Eastern Bloc standards. However, it can be components, it can be old ammunition, old uh, rockets and stuff like that. It can even be uh, something that is covertly coming from another country and being loaded here onto the vessel. So something is cooking and uh, the Americans would never ever make such an allegation if they do not have confirmed and corroborated uh, intelligence in, in that regard. So for us, it is quite severe. And the fact that neither the Minister of Defense nor the, the Commander in Chief uh, claims that they know anything about this and is not prepared to talk about that is very, very worrying. Uh, they are harming South Africa more than what they are supporting yeah. us. And uh, they are certainly damaging our relationships, trade and otherwise with the uh, European Union, the United States and the UK. Uh, sure, Kubis, I'm not trying to trivialize though the allegations that are made here by the ambassador, but um, we yeah. know, for instance, with the inv invasion in Iraq, that uh, the US had said that there were weapons of mass destruction and there was never weapons of mass destruction. And right now also the South African government is saying that they're waiting for the evidence. There was no evidence according to that statement that they've released. Well, I think the fact that they have said that, uh, they know that if it's not true, that will be a diplomatic um, uh, calamity and an embarrassment to them. So uh, we know that they possess uh, certain intelligence uh, capabilities um, and they can zoom in so that they know exactly what is going on. We know for a fact uh, that there was activity on the Thursday night uh, before it left on the Friday morning um, uh, so, so what it was, we don't know. It couldn't have been the still offloading of the weapons that was that was delivered on the on the Saturday to the ammunition depot in the Popo, because those trucks has already left by that stage. So something was going on, and something was being loaded onto the vessel. Uh, and the fact that they have now said that there was, uh, or there were something that was that was loaded, uh, it's now a matter of uh, you know coming clear. And, and telling us what happened. Um, alternatively, obviously, we would appreciate the Americans to, to provide us the conf confirmative details, uh, but clearly this is a, 
a diplomatic embarrassment and a dilemma for South Africa uh, that we need to, um, you know, limit the damage as yep. soon as possible and as quick as possible. Otherwise, it can have catastrophic uh, consequences for us. What do you make, Quibus, about the response uh, from the presidency? It says that, uh, of course, there will be this uh, inquiry, which will be led by a retired judge. It also also admits to previous engagements that have taken place and also um, that there was an agreement that there will be an investigation. Um, yet you can simply put through a phone call to the Minister of Defence and ask what has happened and then issue a statement publicly to allay the fears that have been expressed by South Africans and at least the international community as well. But then again, with the defense minister last year, Tandi Mudisa, saying that whatever the cargo ship was, um, whatever was loaded onto that cargo ship were actually stuff that was ordered prior to COVID-19. And that's the reason that it was only being collected now because of the restrictions that was in place uh, because of COVID-19. No, can I just correct you? She said that what was offloaded was in terms of old orders. And those are the ones that I've confirmed. In 2019 and 2020, uh, import permits was issued for um, rounds and shells from Russia. That was offloaded and that was what she was referring to. She was not saying that what was loaded onto the vessel was old orders. I couldn't find any proof of any orders or legitimate orders and permits being issued in that regard. Uh, so, so, so clearly that is quite a different thing. Um, I think you are quite correct. No investigation is required. Remember the fact that the Lady R was allowed to dock in Simonstown even for the offloading of, of legally ordered uh, ammunition uh, was quite unusual. That normally takes place in an ordinary commercial port like Cape Town, uh, Kucha, Kabecha, or, or, or Durban. So the fact that that was allowed was already extraordinary and that means that it was taken, the decision was taken on the highest level to allow a commercial vessel under sanction into a national strategic key point like the Simonstown Naval Base. So no investigation is required by any retired judge. Just honesty, honesty that we require and, and uh, transparency in that regard. When our own uh, integrity is threatened or uh, when our own safety is, is under threat, yes, we can deal with that in a very confidential and classified way. Uh, uh, clearly, that is not the case here. It is becoming a, a diplomatic embarrassment uh, for South Africa and clearly, um, South Africa has been too arrogant with especially America and the European Union and the UK. Uh, and I think they have, they have overplayed their hand and, uh, you know, uh, America is certainly calling them out now. So the onus is solely on South Africa and the president uh, to clarify this because it will not go away. I have, I have submitted a PIA application earlier this week, ironically, um, to get information on, uh, in terms of what was loaded onto the Lady R and offloaded, as well as what was loaded yeah. onto the Russian cargo aircraft, aircraft at um, Air Force Base uh, Waterkloof, because that is also very, very irregular and yeah. unusual. Okay, Quibus, just a quick final one. Earlier on, um, my colleague here, Naledi, was in conversation with Michael Merchant uh, from, from, Open, from, from Open Secrets. And one of the issues that they raised was the work that's being done or should be done by the National Conventional Arms Control Committee. Um, would you be calling on them to appear before the committee in Parliament to also explain um, exactly what happened here and if indeed any arms were sold to the Russian Federation? Remember, the NCACC comes into play when, some, when there is an official application for an export permit or an import permit. Import, import permit. So if there was no official uh, export permit issued, then obviously the NCACC would not have any uh, answer to that. However, uh, we have a quarterly um, meeting, the Joint Standing Committee on Defence with the NCACC, and obviously that will be the, on the agenda. If they don't do it voluntarily, voluntarily, I will certainly put that question 
in terms of all these speculations going on. But I suspect that they will not have an answer because it is normally uh, obliged, they, uh, they are obliged to put that into their reports, not in terms of individual companies buying and selling, but in terms of countries and the class and classification of ammunition and munitions. So, uh, and it, if it doesn't appear there, it means that there was no uh, legitimate and valid application. Um, but that means that it was done covertly. We are aware of very old legislation, still from the old South Africa, that allowed South Africa to uh, covertly import and export uh, uh, ammunition. And whether they have still used that, uh, we, will, we will obviously challenge them should that be the case. Thank you so much for your time. That was the DA Shadow Minister for Defence and Military Veterans, Corbus Mare, on the allegations by the US Ambassador to South Africa, Ruben Brickety, that the Pretoria sent arms to Russia. And of course, this is part of the question that we are asking you this morning. And this is in relation to arms being sold and asking you whether South Africa needs to be transparent. What do you expect to emerge from the investigation into allegations by the US Embassy?